In this video, we'll talk about the differences between euchromatin and heterochromatin. So the building block of chromatin is nucleosome, which comprises of DNA and histones. Now, if we look into a nucleus, we would find several chromatin domain, which are densely packed. And there are certain domains which are loosely packed. The densely packed regions are known as heterochromatin, whereas euchromatin is the region which are loosely packed and more accessible. Heterochromatin and euchromatin are widely different. We would try to understand how they are different at a molecular level. So obviously from a structural point of view, heterochromatin is densely packed and euchromatin is loosely packed. Heterochromatin is associated with silence genes, whereas euchromatin is a hub for active transcription. So let's try to understand what are the molecular factors that differentiates these two structural domains in a chromatin. First of all, we need to understand the status of different histone modification along the chromatin region. Second of all, we need to understand about different histone variants. And thirdly, we need to understand about DNA methylation status. All of these factors would dictate how accessible a chromatin is and how much that can influence a transcription or any other kind of gene expression process. So first thing is histone modification. So when it comes to euchromatin, there are several histone modifications such as acetylation and especially acetylation in H3 or H4 residues are associated with a euchromatin or an open chromatin state. Acetylations like H3K9 acetylation, H3K14 acetylation, H4K acetylations are very prominent among others. Methylation like H3K36 methylation, H3K4 dimethylation is very common in euchromatin. Phosphorylation like H3S10P is very common in euchromatin region. Heterochromatin regions are often associated with several methylations such as H3K27 dimethylation or monomethylation, H420 uh, monomethylation, etc. So what we can appreciate at this point that the histone marks at the euchromatin region and heterochromatin regions are broadly different. And all these marks would uh, dictate how the chromatin is tightly wrapped around in a particular region. Because if there is acetylation, you can understand the chromatin would be loosely packed and it would be accessible towards many factors. If you want to learn more about these histone modification processes, you can click on the I button. Now there are several histone variants which can delineate between euchromatin and heterochromatin regions. In euchromatin region, one can find H2AZ or H3.3 histone variants. Whereas in heterochromatin region, one can find H3.1, 3.2, SENPA, macro H2A, these kind of variants. H1 histone is another important player which can discriminate between euchromatin and heterochromatin. Often it was noticed that H1 histone deposition was fairly low in the euchromatin region. So H1 histone's job is to make the chromatin further compact. So if we have less H1 histone deposition, the chromatin is expected to be more accessible and loosely uh, wrapped. Whereas in heterochromatin region, there is a high density of H1 uh, histone, which can be associated with several complexes that recruit factors for heterochromatinization. Now let's look at the methylation mark and how they are different between euchromatin and heterochromatin. So in the heterochromatin region, one can see hypermethylation. So there are so many methyl marks in the heterochromatin region compared to euchromatin region, which is generally hypomethylated. Now, all these factors are really important for gene expression because in order for gene expression to happen, transcription factors need to gain access to a promoter region and thereby starting the transcription. And this accessibility issue can be solved only when you don't have too much of nucleosome uh, density. So chromatin accessibility is a very important factor that dictates the transcription. That is why euchromatin is generally transcriptionally active, whereas heterochromatin is transcriptionally silent. Now, how to understand a particular region is euchromatin or heterochromatin like? So is there a high throughput technology to do that? 
Yes, exactly by performing ATAC sequencing, we can understand for a particular cell type at a particular time, which regions of the genome are heterochromatinized versus euchromatinized. So if the genome is more accessible, so we would be seeing ATAC peaks. Now, if you want a more detailed video on ATAC seq, you can click on the I button. But if the region is heterochromatinized and the nucleosome density is very high, ATAC peaks would not be seen. That means ATAC peak would tell us about the accessibility of the chrom chromatin at the, that particular region. So in this video, we looked at the differences between euchromatin and heterochromatin from different uh, points of view, like histone variance, histone modification, linker histone, DNA methylation status, and the overall accessibility of chromatin. So I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can find more notes and flashcards in Facebook channel. You can uh, support the channel by clicking on the super thanks option underneath the video. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. See you in next video.